we're going to have to rebuild within this wild, wild west of information flow some sort of curating function. It's time for the Access of Easy podcast, the weekly technology digest that keeps you ahead of the curve. We've got to maybe do something with the internet. Brought to you by EasyDNS.com. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. Garmin is down hard after a ransomware attack. Microsoft is forcing the Edge browser installation on all devices. The FBI is using Travel Company Database as a surveillance tool. And Amazon met with startup founders and then ripped off their product ideas. All this on Access of Easy, number 156. Hey everybody, Mark Jeftovic here with another episode of Access of Easy Weekly Digest. This is number 156. I'm recording this on... What the hell day is it? Uh, July 27, 2020. Let's do the quotes. The quote last week was, The truth never caresses, it always stings. That was another one from H.L. Mencken. And the winner was Ken Weens. This week's quote is a softball. I think everyone should get this. Unthinking respect for authority is the greatest enemy of truth by... And you know what to do. You don't search it up online. First person to post the correct source of the quote to the show notes page gets their next domain or web hosting renewal on us. And the show notes for this week's edition will be at accessofeasy.com slash 156. Okay, so it's no secret that Amazon has a propensity to knock off their own third-party resellers. You're selling in the store on the platform, you have a nice hot product that's doing well, well then Amazon is gonna look at your data, look at your sales, look at your returns, and they're gonna use that data to create their own competing knockoff of your product and sell that and undercut you. That was reported by Wall Street Journal back in, well, it's been going on for years, but Wall Street Journal ran a report on it and we covered it in Access of Easy number 144 and remember amazon testified to congress that they don't do that but wall street journal caught them doing it and now they've run another story that um, amazon has through their vc wing alexa ventures they use their access to startup founders over the process of investment talks to gather information on the product ideas around these investment prospects and then they would turn around and you guessed it launch their own competing products in some cases amazon even went ahead with the investment and they still launched a product that directly undercut their own investments bread and butter revenue generators Um, in other cases they just had the talks they didn't follow through with an investment but they still garnered enough info to launch their product so watch out when amazon wants to meet with you to better understand your business that's probably why they want to understand it bezos is testifying in front of congress tomorrow by the time you hear this so on wednesday of this of this week which would be the 29th of july bezos who claims amazon uses its scale for good will be testifying before the u.s congress Speaking of size, the top four tech companies have more economic clout than a lot of countries do. I was flipping through the Wall Street Journal thing and I came across actually an Axios piece that took a look at the market cap, the revenues, the number of users and cash hordes of the top four tech companies. They also mentioned Microsoft as the fifth top company. And on their own, these companies individually have annual revenues exceeding the GDP of a lot of nation states, and their combined market caps are north of $5 trillion US. And, you know, this size does kind of get to me because I realized that the Fed is actually buying the bonds of a lot of these companies, especially these big ones. And I wrote a piece about this over on 
out of the cave called Why is the Fed Buying My Biggest Competitors Bonds? It just seems like uh, they're picking winners and losers there. Garmin down hard after a ransomware attack. The latest company to be hit and shut down by a ransomware attack is Garmin, the makers of smartwatches, wearables, and aviation navigation gear. So they announced they're going to be taking their systems down, including the main website and the user data syncing for a multi-day window in order to rebuild after the attack. All of the impacted services went down on Thursday, July 23rd. And while Garmin refused to comment or ascribe the outage to ransomware, in media inquiries, several company employees posted to social media and called it a ransomware attack. A pilot I know, I asked him if he was aware of the outage. He responded, quote, Absolutely, the whole aviation community is rocked by it and they are effed. They can't pay the ransom and are going to have a very tough time getting up and running without the ransom. End quote. Microsoft forcing Edge browser installation on all devices. Microsoft is causing no small amount of consternation among users by installing the newest version of their Chromium Edge browser on all computers via a forced Windows update. While Edge was previously included in Windows, the new version attempts to navigate the user away from their current default browser, tries to get you to switch default browsers. Um, it also preempts the next website launch, whatever that means, but the guy writing the article said that, and it inserts itself onto the desktop and pins itself to the taskbar. And also, it cannot be uninstalled. FBI using travel company database as a surveillance tool. So this Forbes article details the history of Sabre, which is one of three global databases that tracks pretty well all travel movements like flights and hotel bookings of everybody. The other two databases are based in Europe. One's Amadeus in Madrid, and the other is the UK's travel port. So Sabre is uniquely situated so that it has data visibility across multiple airlines, multiple hotel chains. Law enforcement agents can monitor a user, and with a single request to a single database, they can get all the information. According to a former CEO of the Mexican division, she now works for the World Travel and Tourism Council, Sabre was the second largest privately owned database in the world as of 2010. And on at least four known occasions, such requests were made for real-time travel movements of targets where Sabre would make reports on a weekly basis over a period of months outlining the movements of a given person of interest. Sabre is a publicly traded company. They are on the NASDAQ and they have a $2 billion market capitalization. Blue Leaks reveals DHS worried that face masks will impair facial recognition. So we reported in Access of Easy 135 how China had advanced their facial recognition software to the point where they could still identify people even when they were wearing a mask. Apparently, the technology is not so advanced in the USA, where the Department of Homeland Security expressed concerns in a leaked memo that mask wearing among the public will thwart facial recognition systems. More interesting, I think, is the source of this leak. It came via Blue Leaks, the WikiLeaks like whistleblowing site that we reported on back in Access of Easy number 152, and they released material that WikiLeaks won't. Twitter hack reveals vibrant dark market for inside access. So after last week's epic and huge Twitter hack, cybercrime reporter Brian Krebs delved into the seemingly vibrant marketplace that operates mainly off a of Discord, where hackers with access to Twitter employees manipulate accounts for Bitcoin payments. And through them, you can regain access to a suspended account or take over a so-called OG account. That's a coveted Twitter handle comprising of just one or two characters. I read it. I wondered if this is how some of these blue check marks seem to abound and multiply, especially since, according to Twitter, they have suspended the verification uh, program years ago. EasyDNS once had a had to deal with a fake EasyDNS Twitter account. We finally got it taken down and we said okay well since people are impersonating us why don't we get verified and they're like oh sorry we don't do verifications anymore meanwhile you know you see all the cool kid journos get blue checks all the time there's even thoughts of a dog 
Twitter account has a blue check mark, and he also blocked me on Twitter for mentioning this. A separate article on Dark Reading states, quote, former employees told Reuters that the thousands plus individuals had access to internal Twitter tools that can change user account settings and give third parties access to account controls, end quote. So Twitter founder Jack Dorsey on an investor call after the hack promised to do better and that the company was searching for a new head of security. And this week on the Axis of Easy, Jesse explored the increasing control software code is poised to exert in our day-to-day lives in his MetaViews piece, When Your Boss is an Algorithm. And Charles tried to sugarcoat the overall socioeconomic situation with his Welcome to the Crazed Frantic Demise of Finance Capitalism. And as I said, for my part, I wondered, why is the Fed buying my biggest competitor's bonds over on Out of the Cave? And on the salon, we zeroed in primarily on the future of education, headed into a world with a lot less jobs to go around, and we explored how the civil unrest in places like Portland portend more than meets the eye and the surface narratives that are ascribed to it. So that's Axis of Easy Salon number 14, Jobageddon and the Coming Educational Revolts. That's it for Axis of Easy this week. Seems like a bit of a shorter episode, and uh, I guess uh, that's all I really had to uh, comment on this week. Once again, the show notes are at axisofeasy.com slash 156, and uh, stay healthy, stay safe, stay sane, and we will see you all next week. Oh